I remember when I first met with John and Dave, one of the first things John said to me was like, first thing you need to know is um, everyone we work with is nice. Just <laughs> everyone's nice. And that's just the way it is. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, that's a cool requirement. What's been amazing, I think, about Ahsoka and her journey over all of these different shows is how she's interwoven. You know, and I think that's what's also really excited, exciting about the Ahsoka series is that it's interwoven. The world building is so huge and the community is so big. And what's so exciting, I think, about Ahsoka's journey over all of these years and how you can see her being cosplayed, but all of the people she interacts with also being cosplayed is because each of these characters is just, no one's a side character ever. You know, there's so much power to them and necessity to them in each of these stories. So it might say Ahsoka, but it's a family. Um, and behind it's also it stage. Ahsoka. <laughs> <laughs> it is, and it is. I, 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 what I love about it is that I get to, you know, the little things that we've gotten to hint at in these other shows, we get to more deeply explore. Because I think she, whether you've seen the previous animations or have only seen these episodes, she's still quite mysterious at this stage and point in her life. And so that's what I think is the most exciting part about have, of Ahsoka having her series here, is that you get to better understand her um, in this part of her journey. So much like your father. What should I do about him? Trust your instincts. I have been cast for a year now, so it's been a while that I've been holding on to this. I thought I'd have to hold on to it till the show came out, so the fact that I got to be part of Celebration was so special and unexpected. Yeah, I sent in a tape. I didn't know what I was auditioning for. I read scenes from a completely different film that had nothing to do with Star Wars. I wasn't told it was for this. I just sort of, I saw the scenes and just by chance, my friend and I were like, this kind of feels like a young, like Han Solo vibe kind of thing. Maybe we should emulate that. We weren't given any information. And I sent them in and it was a very, very quick process. I was like suspicious. I was like, wait, I had the offer? for this. And then I met John Favreau later and he was basically like, I get it, I'm an actor. I don't wanna put you through the ringer. I don't wanna make you do a million takes and auditions and tests. Like we know we want you and that's it. And I really appreciated that. I remember when I first met with John and Dave, one of the first things John said to me was like, first thing you need to know is um, everyone we work with is nice. Just <laughs> everyone's nice. And that's just the way it is. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, that's a cool requirement. It is really awesome to have practical oh, yeah. effects and things to actually interact with. Yes. And all of the guys who work all of the machinery and are, you know, just, yeah. I mean, it's the coolest technology that exists, you know, and I've, I felt it, you know, it was literally the same guys who did the worm guys in Men in Black 2 who were working Grogu. Um, when I was on the Mandos, we were like, oh my God, we've done this before. And it's, you know, it just, it brings to life this world in a way that doesn't feel fantasy. Yeah. It feels very real. Because it is. Very We're real. such spoiled actors. Everything's there for us to look at and touch and see. And mm -hmm. it's amazing. When I saw the volume for the first time, the set we work on, mm -hmm. wow. Like I'd seen the Disney featurette with the, with the behind the scenes and everything. But when you're there in person and you see how quickly it can change from set to set and how they control it and how part of it's in focus and part of it's not, it's just so crazy to be one of the first cost to be able to work on a technology like that that's definitely going to take over the world so that is so cool i definitely felt that when that i was on so cool. mando ah so cool it's ah so cool um and especially because robert rodriguez <clears throat> was filming a lot and i got to be on set with him and we did when we did sin city it was just you know green screen yeah. and we were have tape on the floor and the cameras had to stay fixed and then we had to rotate as actors to get our coverage wow to do our overs and everything because the cameras had to stay fixed and to now walk into this space where everyone can see everything and it still has the grandness and scope and depth and breadth of star wars in a room is just remarkable to see how far technology has come in such a short period of time so yeah definitely that would probably be one of my most exciting moments too, just stepping on stage and realizing, wait, we're shooting outdoors. <laughs> indoors. Oh There's God. not much left to imagine.
It was a three hour process when we first started. We have gotten it down now just for at least the makeup to an hour and a half. The whole look is about two hours and it's just remarkable. It's such a team effort, you know, and we're doing it 4.30 and five o'clock in the morning. And, you know, just the sort of level of joy and detail, you know, because you gotta love it every single day. You're not like dialing it in. There's no dialing it in in Star Wars. There's no like, okay, I did this, it's old hat. <laughs> it's like, it, you know, each piece, every single part of it can change. The weather, whether we're in their volume, we have to do different things because my skin tone changes. Um, you know, with, I have a whole forehead piece that I wear and sometimes if the prosthetic itself is different, you know, so it's just, it, it feels very present. It makes, it renders us very present every day. Um, and we count down every day we start yes. how long it takes us. And we're like, oh man, we did it in this many minutes, you know? Yeah. Um, Everyone wants a later call time. So we're like, oh my God, it's 4.30 a.m. this morning <laughs> instead of 4.15. <laughs> yes! I think a big part of it is because you got to, if you've seen her in the animation, you know, you've gotten to grow up with her and watch her grow up. And, you know, she was a spunky, spirited teenager, you know, and who's who's really growing into her wisdom and her experiences. And we've grown up with her. It's not like we were suspended in animation during that time, like we've evolved. And when you go back and reflect and you watch those things, you, you see yourself differently. And so I think that's just what's really fun is to, you know, it feels very real, whether it's animation or not, to see a character that is that you love evolve and mature, like literally mature. I love that that was a decision that was made by Dave. Like, yeah. I'm not putting it all out there. She has she has some milestones to achieve. That is something that I found really, really special. And what I keep going back to when we're filming is to not just make to make sure she's not flat that she's very as real as possible and that she's struggling with her humanity and her experiences and her desires and goals and like finding that balance in herself. I think in the same way that, all, in a very different way, obviously, yes. I'll say, I can't say the same way as everyone. She is a very particular um, being, I think in a way that still feels very, um, that resonates, you know, and, and yeah, especially because of the community around her and the yeah. relationships around her. I think she's so affected by her relationships. I think that's one of the things that seems like a, a story point within the Jedi, like no attachments or yeah. whatever. People get really hung up on that. Yeah. And that's, it's Did not you? like that there's no relationships yeah. there and that there's no feeling. And I think actually because of people always kind of pushing to that no attachment thing, you're always kind of surprised by just how emotional she and everyone else is around her. And I think that's actually really beautiful because I think human beings surprise themselves how emotional they can be because we can kind of get into our routines oh, yeah. as well and forget ourselves. And when we see that unexpected in a character that we love and think we've known so well, I think it reminds us that we can surprise ourselves too. Yeah, that's a great answer. I'm learning so much. <laughs> <laughs>